Have you ever dreamed of starting your own podcast? Well, you can. It's simple, it's easy, and best of all, it's free. By going to anchor.fm, you can start your own podcast today and have your own show up and ready to go. Anchor's graphic user interface is user friendly and you get paid for your content by setting up a Stripe account. Go to anchor.fm. Again, that's anchor.fm and start your podcast today. Welcome to the Living Healthy Podcast, where you can improve your quality of life by making solid and informed decisions. I'm your host, Eddie Randall. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Living Healthy Podcast. This is episode 10 of season one. Tonight, I'll be talking about strengthening cognition through superfoods and brain exercises. Now, the human brain is perhaps the most replete and astonishing organ, and all the complex workings of the human mind are not completely understood. The human brain has about 100 trillion synapses. There are also a large number of neurons that do not respond to normal stimuli. This adds to the mystery of the human brain and is one of the primary reasons why we do not have a clear understanding of how to cure certain diseases like Alzheimer's disease and dementia. The brain loves to remember, and thankfully it can handle vital and complicated processes without our knowledge. An example would be breathing. The brain works with the autonomic nervous system to allow us to breathe while sleeping. Another example is when the brain sends signals to glands in the skin to initiate dilation of the pores, allowing us to sweat in order to control body temperature. There is no doubt that the brain is truly remarkable, and as incredible as it is, unknown factors can lead to cognitive decline. Fortunately, there are ways to help improve your brain health and potentially ward off illness that may develop in old age. No matter how smart someone is, strengthening cognition is something everyone would want and everyone would benefit from. Improving one's cognition would not only help to prevent or mitigate diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia, it would also improve your overall quality of life. When I talk about strengthening cognition, I'm speaking about things we can eat that improve brain health. There are thousands of research studies conducted that have provided scientific evidence that certain foods improve brain function and cognition. By simply increasing consum uh, uh, consumption of some of these foods or incorporating some of them into your diet, you can not only improve your quality of life, but it can also add years to your life. When I talk about brain exercises, I'm referring to things we can do to strengthen our brains. Think of it this way. When it comes to professional fighters who can go five rounds in a fight, their cardio is often brought up as their endurance comes into question depending on the opponent that they're up against. Cardio refers to the aerobic exercises um, where you build endurance, which can improve circulation and help strengthen your lungs. The same way we exercise by running, jogging, lifting weights, or doing sit-ups, we can do similar exercises for our brain. Uh, exercising your brain can be done by doing things like learning a new language or reading a lot. If you think about it, it makes sense. When we learn something new, the brain goes through neuroplasticity. This is where new connections are made between neurons. Essentially, brain health is as important, if not more, than physical health. In this podcast, I will talk about a major cognitive issue, then I will discuss superfoods that we can eat and brain exercises that we can do that can improve cognition and overall brain health. Now, Strengthening cognition from the womb. To expectant mothers and women who plan on having children. You are in a position to help your child not only get a great start on life by improving their cognition, 
but you can set them on a path that can aid them in their later years to lessen or prevent Alzheimer's disease. Most people have heard about playing classical music um, when you're pregnant or making sure to read aloud to your child while pregnant. A child in the womb obviously does not understand what the words they mean, what the words mean that they're hearing. However, they are able to recognize their mother's voice and the sounds that they hear can stimulate interest and learning. Now, this is all for good reason. The first eight years of a child's life are extremely important in regard to learning and cognitive stimulation. On CPL.org, the Cleveland Public Library website, there's an article by Rebecca Donahue called Born to Read, Reading to Your Baby in the Womb. She states that babies can recognize words that they first hear in the womb. She states further that reading to your baby can kickstart healthy brain development. There was a study conducted by the University of Florida and an article written by Charlene Kruger and Cynthia Garvan. They published their findings and the paper was called Emergence and Retention of Learning in Early Fetal Development. They tested pregnant women and their unborn babies. They found that when reading a familiar nursery rhyme that the baby had heard before, their heart rates slowed down. When it was a new nursery rhyme, their heart rate remained unchanged. This demonstrated that babies can learn and recognize from inside the womb. Research shows that reading to your child Playing music for him or her and speaking to your child while in the womb not only helps their brain health, but it can aid in life learning as it encourages the child to develop learning patterns that they can benefit from into adulthood. Essentially, when they're older, the willingness to learn and read will be further instilled, bolstering this intangible defense against Alzheimer's and dementia. Fighting Alzheimer's and Dementia Unfortunately, there is no cure for dementia, as scientists are not quite sure what causes, causes the disease. Most people associate dementia with old age, which can be true. However, dementia is not normal. What happens is as you age, your brain receptors slow a little, and you're not as quick, and being a little forgetful or taking a bit longer to catch on can be normal. However, dementia, as I mentioned, is not normal. It's a loss of cognitive functioning. Additionally, it does not always happen to older people. Alzheimer's disease, which is a form of dementia, can affect people as early as their 40s. One thing that is most often found in the brain of Alzheimer's patients is a buildup of aluminum deposits. Research shows aluminum in the brain of Alzheimer's patients but so far, scientists cannot definitely prove that the aluminum deposits have caused Alzheimer's. Aluminum has been theorized to be behind the pathology of this disease for a very long time. This is why in the last 20 years or so, there have been increasing awareness of exposure to aluminum as autopsies have displayed levels of aluminum in the, uh, the brains of Alzheimer's patients. As with increasing awareness, comes the response by manufacturers by making changes in cookware and in personal care products. For example, companies who make antiperspirants have been making more of a variety of deodorants and limiting the variety of antiperspirants. Antiperspirants contain aluminum silicate, which come from refined clay and its intent is to go into the pores of your armpits and prevent you from sweating. However, it is normal to sweat and that being said, no one wants to smell as it's unattractive, but societal pressure should not make you feel ashamed of a natural bodily function and force you to expose yourself to harmful chemicals. The reason I'm talking about Alzheimer's, the brain and aluminum, is because there's, there's too much evidence linking it as a cause of Alzheimer's, especially when I'm talking about ways to prevent it. That being said, just avoiding aluminum is not enough to protect you against Alzheimer's. But I strongly recommend avoiding antiperspirants and using regular deodorants instead. To describe Alzheimer's in the brain, I'll briefly describe the process. A tau is a phosphorylated protein that attaches to microtubules inside of a neuron. 
One of the many things that microtubules are responsible for is synaptic transmission. Synaptic transmission is when a neuron communicates with a target cell. Neurons can fail to communicate where neurofibrillary tangles occur. These tangles are tangles that take place within brain cells. The phosphorylated tau that forms part of this structure has been found with aluminum plaques. An example of this plaque buildup in the brain can best be described in terms of telephone lines that get twisted or tied up, thereby preventing the information from traveling through the wire and onto the other wire of adjacent telephone poles. On the National Library of Medicine website, there's an article by Lasiha Tomlinovic called Aluminum and Alzheimer's Disease. After a century of controversy, is there a plausible link? She states that since 1911, there have been numerous research studies that show that aluminum buildup in the brain causes Alzheimer's. She also states that because of this, people should lessen their exposure to aluminum. Additionally, there is an article on PubMed.gov by Tokotaki, Nagasi, Morisaki, and Oyanagi called Aluminum Detected in Senile Plaques and Neurofibrillary Tangles is Contained in Lipofusin Granules with Silicon, probably as Aluminosilicate. In their study, they looked at the brains of people with and without dementia and determined that the neurofibrillary tangles in the autopsied brains of those with dementia were associated with aluminum and silicon. Foods for a healthier brain. There are foods that you can eat that can help to boost cognition and fight against cognitive decline. Blueberries are excellent for brain health and memory. The anthocyanins that give blueberries their deep, rich blue color also contain antioxidants that researchers found that help to improve brain function and cognition. Dark chocolate is also beneficial. The antioxidants help the brain tremendously, but please remember, this is not the milk chocolate ones that are so popular. It has to be at least 80% chocolate or higher and organic if you can get it. Bananas are also a great way to boost cognition. They have vitamin B6. Now this vitamin is key in helping to prevent cognitive decline. Kale is a good source of lutein. Not only does it fight against blurry vision and macular degeneration, but it also helps to improve concentration. Spinach contains vitamin E and vitamin K. These are great nutrients for the body, but they also contain antioxidants that promote overall brain health. Brussels sprouts are good for niacin as well as vitamin A, E, and K. Vitamin A creates retinoic acid, and it's been established that patients with dementia suffer from a retinoic dis, uh, deficiency. Uh, cauliflower has many vitamins, but the body uses the choline it contains to create acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that is essential in improving memory. Beets have been shown to improve blood flow to the brain, resulting in improved concentration. They're also packed full of nutrients and minerals. Salmon, bluefin tuna, sardines, and mackerel are great sources of protein and vitamin B12, and they can help the brain due to their high content of omega-3 fatty acids. Coffee, which is a great drink that millions love, myself included, it's another great way to fight against cognitive decline. Dark coffee contains polyphenols, which many plants use as a defense mechanism. When consumed, these polyphenols can pass on their benefits. In particular, they can aid in the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. In the Journal of Gerontology, there's an article by Driscoll, Shoemaker, Snively, and several others called Relationships Between Caffeine Intake and Risks for Probable Dementia or Global Cognitive Impairment, the Women's Health Initiative Memory Study. In their article, uh, they concluded that women who have two to three cups of coffee per day were 36% less likely to develop Alzheimer's over a 10-year period. Uh, but please keep in mind that you can also have decaffeinated coffee as well. 
So if you have an ailment that can be exacerbated by caffeine, you may want to go the decaffeinated route. Uh, pumpkin seeds are a good source of copper. Uh, this mineral can help enzymes that aid in brain function and can help to prevent Alzheimer's and even Parkinson's disease. Walnuts and flax seeds are also a great source of omega-3 fatty acids and peanuts are rich in vitamin E. Green tea has a lengthy history and has been a go-to cure-all that originated uh, in Asia. It's believed that the amino acid L-theanine is responsible for helping to improve cognition. Uh, turmeric, which is a fantastic and great tasting spice, contains curcumin, which can aid in cognition as well as reducing inflammation. Apples contain quercetin, which is great for regulating blood glucose levels and fighting inflammation. Scientists have now discovered that this phenomenal antioxidant may stimulate neurogenesis, which is the production of new brain cells. On February 11th of 2021, there was an article published on the Stem Cell Reports website entitled Apple Peel and Flesh Contain Pro-Neurogenic Compounds. This was a collaborative study between researchers at the University of Queensland and the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases. Their tests involved lab mice and a diet of apples, and they concluded that the quercetin was found to promote neurogenesis. Uh, quinoa has been known to help with memory loss. The B2 vitamins that it contains are a good source of iron and supports blood flow to the brain. Eggs not only raise HDL, which is your high-density lipoproteins, aka good cholesterol, um, eggs also contain choline, which is also found in cauliflower, and lutein, which is also found in kale. Um, as I mentioned earlier, choline helps memory and lutein helps concentration. On top of that, they also contain B vitamins, which can slow cognitive decline. Uh, peanut butter is a healthy fat that contains vitamin E, and it's an antioxidant that reduces inflammation. This is great for fighting cognitive decline. On the U.S. Library of Medicine website, there's an article by Lafata, Weber, and Mohajeri. The article is named Effects of Vitamin E on Cognitive Performance During Aging and in Alzheimer's Disease. Their study concluded that vitamin E delayed and mitigated cognitive decline in elderly people with and without Alzheimer's disease. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for supporting the podcast. The Living Healthy Podcast is listed on many platforms, including Anchor, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Bullhorn, and many others. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And don't forget to check out the Living Healthy Podcast channel on YouTube. Also, if you have any questions or would like me to discuss a particular topic or you'd like to be a guest on the show, please contact me at livinghealthylivinghealthy at gmail.com. Train your body, train your brain. The way you exercise to lose weight or to get in shape or to train for an athletic sport is tantamount to the way you can train and exercise your brain. As an example, the more we learn, the easier it becomes to learn new things. I mentioned neuroplasticity earlier, where new connections are made between neurons when we learn. The more you practice something, the better you get at it, the stronger the connections become. When you stop practicing, those same connections can become weak. And just because someone is older does not necessarily mean that they have cognitive decline or that they're a bit slower. On the American Psychological Association's website, Melissa Phillips wrote an article named The Mind at Midlife. She talked about a study involving airline pilots and traffic controllers. She stated that the research group consisted of individuals ages 40 to 69, and they used flight simulators. Mrs. Phillips concluded that the younger pilots performed faster, but the older pilots performed better. From working in healthcare, 
I can testify firsthand that I've had patients in their 80s that are just as sharp and diligent as 40-year-olds. Here are some of the brain exercises that you can do. Learn a new language. Learning a new language is perhaps one of the best ways to exercise your brain. It takes a lot of effort and time to learn a new language, but it can be done and it's a great accomplishment that can not only benefit your brain health, but also benefits you in life as you can accomplish more socially and financially if you know another language. Learning a new language can also aid in neurogenesis. The right part of your brain is responsible for visualization, and the left part of your brain, which is the dominant half, is responsible for language. Learning another language can help you to learn and interpret things a lot faster. It can also help you to fight off or mitigate ailments such as Alzheimer's disease. On the National Library of Medicine website, there's an article by Craik, Bialstock, and Friedman called Delaying the Onset of Alzheimer's Disease, Bilingualism as a Form of Cognitive Reserve. Their study involving 211 people concluded that bilingualism delayed the onset of Alzheimer's by 5.1 years. When it comes to language, English is one type of orthography, which just means it has symbols used to represent the language. Many language are, languages are consistent in that a letter can have the same pronunciation. English is considered to be the most inconsistent language. Inconsistency means phonetically there are differences. As an example, the word carry and the word cement. The letter C is used in both words, but pronounced differently in both words. In contrast, looking at the German language, almost each letter has its own unique sound. I bring this up to make the point that when it comes to learning and reading a new language, it's easier to do with a more consistent language. The brain pretty much uses the same areas when learning a language, however, there are select parts of the brain that are used depending on the language that you're learning and using. On the NCBI website, there's an article by Kao, Brannon, and Booth called The Brain Adapts to Orthography with Experience, Evidence from English and Chinese. With the use of fMRI and brain mapping, their study revealed that different regions of the brain adapted to the language that was being used. This comes into play when I was speaking earlier about the connections that, that are grown between neurons when learning a language. This is why I recommend learning a new language as a way to strengthen the brain. Crossword puzzles and find the word puzzles. Crossword puzzles and find the word puzzles are an easy and beneficial way to work on improving cognition. The human mind loves to solve and figure out things. This is why at nighttime, when you're sleeping and you see shadows of the furniture in your bedroom and you think about the shape of a person or a ghost, it's just your brain trying to figure out what you're looking at based on the brain's past experiences. So when it comes to puzzles, learning words or reinforcing their use is a great way to improve cognition. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that's produced that regulates mood, concentration, and memory. Dopamine is released and gives you a euphor euphoric feeling when you solve something or complete a task or do something that makes you feel happy. Low levels of dopamine can cause a person to develop uh, schizophrenia, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease. A Harvard Health publication in collaboration with helpguide.org they provide information and health articles. Uh, there's an article on helpguide.org that's called What's Causing Your Memory Loss. It states that a lack of dopamine results in Parkinson's disease and that dementia happens in 30 to 80 percent of the people who have Parkinson's disease. This is proof on the link I was describing in regard to low levels of dopamine. Now you can download free puzzles online or you can pick up a book of puzzles at your local uh, bookstore or supermarket. Solving math problems. This is another way the um, you can benefit your brain by completing a challenge. Um, it helps with problem solving as well as improving memory. Practicing math problems can help to strengthen the brain and also build new connections. As the puzzles as with puzzles rather, you can download free math problems online or pick up a book 
of problems at, at a local store. Jigsaw puzzles. Completing jigsaw puzzles can improve short-term memory and improve cognition. It can also help with spatial reasoning. Spatial reasoning is the ability to solve things involving shapes, space, and measurement. For example, some people can empty a box of parts on the ground and put those parts together quickly as they analyze and identify where they go easily. Reading. Reading not only bolsters your vocabulary, but it aids in neurogenesis by learning new words. Research on this study was done by Lee, Richards, Chan, and others. In their article named Association of Daily Intellectual Activities with Lower Risk of Incident Dementia Among Older Chinese Adults. They studied over 15,000 individuals aged 60 and older who read books, newspapers, and magazines, and determined that five years later, they are, their activities put the participants at a lower risk for developing dementia. Building models. Building models is a great hobby and can be very rewarding. Um, it can also allow your creative genius to shine. As with jigsaw puzzles, it can really bolster spatial reasoning. Any true or serious model builder knows that depending on how well engineered the kit is, you may have to build it in different steps than the direction state. You may also have to scratch build parts, which means creating parts with the plastic sprue that are not part of the original kit, but are part of the actual item, like a car or airplane, that the model is designed after. Knitting or crocheting. Knitting or crocheting are not only great ways to create beautiful things, but it can help the brain to reduce cortisol, which relieves stress. As with reading, knitting and crocheting can aid in neurogenesis. On anxietyresourcecenter.org, there's an article by Betty Houtman called How Crochet and Knitting Help the Brain. She states that knitting and crocheting help to create and strengthen new neural pathways. My mother knits and crochets, and watching her over the years, she has created some very beautiful works. It's a fascinating and dexterous skill, and I'm happy that my mom was able to create and bolster her health in the process. Uh, drawing and painting. Not only does drawing and painting unleash your creativity, what you create can be as unique as you are. You can reduce stress and improve concentration and cognition when you create. On Harvard Medical School's website, they have an article called The Healing Power of Art. It states that the studies have proved that creating art has been linked to bolstering memory and thought. Learn an instrument. Learning to play an instrument helps to fine-tune motor skills, and the brain focuses as one part is played and prepares for the next part. I feel that this is also one of the best ways to help bolster neurogenesis. The corpus callosum is part of the brain that connects both halves and allows both sides to communicate with one another. Autopsies of musicians have shown that they have larger corpus callosums than those who do not play musical instruments. Carger Publishing publishes scientific and medical journals. They have an article by Zhu M, Wang X, Gao W, and several others called Corpus Callosum, Atrophy and Cognitive Decline in Early Alzheimer's Disease Longitudinal MRI Study. They concluded that the atrophy of the corpus callosum is prominent in Alzheimer's patients in juxtaposition to the control group of the experiment listening to music. Everyone has their favorite songs that make them feel good when they hear them. Songs can have meaning just by hearing those songs while living during a good time in your life, and hearing those songs again brings back those good memories. On Harvard Health's website, Dr. Anne Fabini wrote an article called Music Can Boost Memory and Mood. She wrote that studies have shown that elderly people scored higher on tests involving memory and reasoning when they engaged in physical activities while listening to music. Listening to music is simple, but what is not simple is the complex, complex way that the brain interprets the signals to make sense of what you're hearing. Listening to music can also have a calming effect and can help to improve your memory. On John Hopkins' website, there's an article called Keep Your Brain Young with Music, 
and it states that research has determined that listening to music will reduce anxiety and improve overall memory. Learn a new skill. You can learn a new skill, and it can be anything that can help your mind or intrigue you to get you to think. Learning a new skill can help to bolster confidence and expand knowledge. This can help to create new brain pathways and improve cognition. It can be anything from learning how to collect coins or learning to cook traditional Russian food. Additional things you can do to help brain function. One of the additional things is to get eight hours of sleep. Now in this day and age, it can seem downright impossible. Albeit, sleeping is one of the most satisfying things in life as getting a good, solid, deep sleep can help the body to heal, repair, and recharge. In order to encourage sleep, you may want to limit things like caffeine and water before bed. You may also want to exercise for 20 or 30 minutes to help tire yourself or to help to relax, read a book or listen to soothing music. Try doing things that relax you to help you get to sleep and this can help to diminish your chances of developing dementia. On Harvard's website, Dr. Andrew Budson has an article called Sleep Well and Reduce Your Risk of Dementia and Death. He notes that researchers have determined that people who slept fewer than five hours a night were twice as likely to develop dementia in juxtaposition to those who got eight hours of sleep per night. Strive to stay active. Trying to stay active um, is a great thing to do in order to fight off obesity, blood clots, cardiac issues, and even improve your brain health. Staying active is one of the simplest things you can do, as any level of exercise or exertion is better than none. You can uh, park a little further away when you go to the store to put a few more steps in your day. You can take um, the steps instead of the elevator. You can go for short walks. You can run, jog, jump rope, and swim. If access is not permitting these activities, um, you can look into obtaining an elliptical machine, exercise bike, a treadmill, weight bench, or even just uh, dumbbells. Uh, losing muscle mass is part of life, but staying fit any way you can can add years to your life. It can also mitigate any ailment that you may end up having. If you ever have or have sur if you ever have to have surgery or suffer from any type of ailment, being fit improves your recovery time and diminishes the duration of that ailment. Limit exposure to aluminum. As I was stating earlier with aluminum and antiperspirants, you can do your best to limit your exposure. Make sure you read the labels of foods and products that you use. Understandably enough, labels can be very small. Just use your phone to take a picture and blow it up and read the label. Also look out for ingredients that you have never heard of before. Some manufacturers find legal loopholes in using an alternative name for a potentially dangerous ingredient, which could be 100% legal. This also carries over into cookware and cooking. You may want to use a roast pan with a cover instead of an aluminum foil for your next turkey um, during Thanksgiving or Christmas. This is going to do it for this episode of the Living Healthy Podcast. I want to thank you very much for listening. I want to thank you for your support, and I will see you next time. And remember, living healthy creates a better you.